but he doesn't want to assassinate people because of course he doesn't because do they ever i wish they did i have had a very unpleasant morning <laughs> so it's 2 a.m oh my god my voice i'm now just past the halfway point <laughs> reading this forever last day of 1975 season <laughs> guys just before we get into this week's vlog i would like to thank the sponsor of today's video which is once again the wonderful serious readers so this is the first time you are hearing about serious readers they are a uk based company that design and manufacture daylight lamps now as we all know there is not a whole ton of daylight available in winter it's miserable and what's so special about serious readers is that they utilize purple leds in their patented daylight wavelength technology to provide the most technically accurate representation of the daylight spectrum that can currently be contained within a lamp. Now what this means for me is that I can do a whole host of activities without daylight and also without straining my eyes. So I'm obviously talking about reading, I'm talking about jigsaws, embroidery, knitting and all of the stuff that I usually struggle to do past 3 p.m in winter. Something else that's really cool about Serious Readers and their Serious Lights range is that the lamps are completely customizable. I obviously chose a finish and a style of lamp to match my house. You can also have white lamps, you can have heavy beast lamps that have like wood finishes, you can have two head attachments, you can make them compact and have a lightweight base which is what I chose with mine and as well as that we also have a whole range of versatility within the light function in itself with adjustable beam width and adjustable brightness as well. So I have two serious readers lights behind me. This one is the high definition light that comes with adjustable adjustable brightness and adjustable beam width but I also have the compact light here as well. So if you would like to check out Serious Readers for yourself I do have an offer code for you guys today. If you click on the link right at the top of my description box and enter the code SR214 at checkout you will get a free compact light worth £150 with any purchase of a light from the Serious Lights range. Once again a big thank you to Serious Readers for sponsoring this video. Hello, hello from the spare bedroom. It is a beautiful day. It's a freezing day, but it's a beautiful day. We have some of that gorgeous blinding winter sunlight coming right through the window. And I'm currently, oh God, I can't see now. <laughs> I'm currently exporting last week's vlog, which is a whopping hour and a half. I can guarantee, I think, that this one isn't going to be as long because my only real goal for this week is to make as much progress in my actual January TBR as possible. Which, to be honest, I don't actually think is going to be that much progress. We're going to be kicking off with the books that I'm already in the middle of, one of which is still Promises and Pomegranates by Savar Miller. I might DNF it. I don't know. I haven't really dipped into it for a while, so I guess when I return to it, I'll make my mind up. But I've been trying my my hardest to multitask with reading. I used to be good at it when I had like clear places and times to read certain books and now that I kind of can read whatever I want whenever I want I'm not very good at dipping in and out of multiple things. So another book that I've started intending to slowly make progress on, I have made progress on really but not as much as I would have liked because I'm currently still only 210 pages into Eye of the World by Robert Jordan so since I last checked in with you guys in the vlog I think I've read about 100 pages. I am making a spoiler video on this as well whether I actually continue because reading this has been such a disjointed experience the film in the spoiler vlog has also been a disjointed experience. So far that's the plan. Whether it actually happens or not, I guess we'll find out. But this is my main priority book, but because it requires a little bit more brain power and a little bit more focus for me to actually read it, I think I'm going to read Promises and Pomegranates in bed because normally by the time I get in bed these days, I'm too tired to really focus on what I'm reading. And this one is what I'm going to read like throughout the day and early evening. So we'll talk about Promises and Pomegranates when I get to it. But Eye of the World is the first book in the Wheel of Time series. I'm sure you guys already know that. And we're following the, we're following a group of kids 
essentially. I have really have no idea how old anyone is. And they live in a very small village that is ransacked by Trollocs, which are demonic like creatures. And an Aes Sedai and her warder, which is like a sorceress and her bodyguard, take the kids because the, the Trollocs are looking for a boy of a certain age because they're looking for the dragon reborn. So they take all of the boys and they take Nynaeve, who the Aes Sedai thinks has the potential to be an Aes Sedai and they run away with them so that the Trollocs will ideally not attack the village again still looking for these boys however this means that they're then on the run so they are trying to is it the White Tower they're going to the place where the Aes Sedai are from which will hopefully offer them a little bit of protection but the reason why the Trollocs are after these boys is because one of them is the Dragon Reborn which is this legendary figure that's reincarnated in every age and plays a big part in like the um, consequential events of the age so from what I can gather from what I've read, the overarching goal of this series is going to be to change the world for the better with the Dragon Reborn being kind of like the catalyst figure that makes that happen. And we have the Dark One who's like an evil agent that's trying to make the world worse with every age. And then we have a good agent, which I'm not sure if that is the Dragon Reborn or whether the Dragon Reborn's a pawn. There's also potential possibly for the Aes Sedai to be the agents of light which is just kind of like my guesswork at the the current point that I'm at I don't really expect it to become any clearer until I'm like way far into this book but it's 771 pages I am co-hosting the read-along for this series which is the wheel of time along and I think we've confirmed the live show for this I'm pretty sure it is the 4th of February which I think this video will go at first but it is the 4th of February at 6 p.m uk if you guys are reading along with us and would like to join the live show if you're a fan of this series and you want to see everyone's thoughts. I, I'm bumping this up to main book status because just having it as a secondary book while it was working for me for a while like I've been reading this for about three weeks and I read like one chapter every four days <laughs> so um yeah I am really enjoying it as well which is the important part it's just I need to prioritize it now so that's going to be kind of my main goal. I may start something else alongside it which doesn't seem like it's a great idea so maybe I'll just rock on with Promises and Pomegranates alongside it um, which is a mafia romance on Kindle Unlimited but we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll play it by ear which is what 2023 is about terrifying thought for somebody like me with a Taipei personality that likes routine and hates spontaneity but um I don't know we're trying something new so the good news is that the guys who are laying the new gas pipe in out the front seem to have given up for the day which means that I can update from down here instead of having to hide in the spare bed Bedroom. But the bad news is that, oh well, it's fine news, I guess. But I did know that I had something else to tell you and I just could not remember what it was. But it is that I got two Waterstones parcels this morning, which I'm very curious about. If I had to guess, could these be two of the indies that Waterstones owes me from June? Which means that they'll only owe me two more after this. Is this one I'm not sure about. I feel like this could be Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton because I'm pretty sure that they charged me for it. This one has the potential to be one of the indies, but I, I don't. No. so we'll start off with this one Brie is very excited Brie's also having her eyeballs washed soon because she's a bit weepy aren't you darling oh no this is two paperbacks could this be two of the paperbacks they've owed me since June it could be it could be Oh my god it is. It's book three and four. I can finally continue the Savage Land series. Okay so I'm going to crack this one open next in case this one is book five. Please be book five because then they'll only owe me the Beautiful Nightmares hardback which I know that they've charged me for. It's definitely a paperback. Finally, I was terrified that these were going to get picked up by a traditional publisher and that they were going to cancel my order. And I just, I have a whole list of indie, because I'm going to the US this year. I have a whole list of indie paperbacks to order while I'm there because if UK publishers keep picking up series that I'm in the middle of <laughs> and I don't want the traditionally published um, editions. But this, this is a miracle. If you guys don't know, in June, I placed a Waterstones order. It was a really, really big one. And it was at the time when they were having warehousing issues. So they still haven't recovered from that. And it's ridiculous that it's taken them this long after a like technical error that happened 
seven months ago. But these books have been trickling in for the last seven months and I finally, finally just have one outstanding. So I'm thrilled about this. So this is, the irony of this as well is that I bought Savage Lands or I got Savage Lands as a gift. Really, really liked it. So when I finished it, I ordered book two from Amazon. Really, really wanted to continue after I finished book two. So I decided to order books three, four, five and six so that the next time I read an installment, when I had that compulsion to continue at the end, I wouldn't have to wait. And the irony is, is that I've had to wait seven months before I could continue this series. It is on KU. I just wanted to read it physically. So I had to wait seven months to continue this series because they never sent me the books. But this is a, it's a fantasy romance, but it also like feels kind of dystopian because it's set in Budapest. It's set 20 years after the like Fey veil or the veil between the world of the Fey and the world of humans fell. So the world has been split into two. There's like a Fey side and a human side. And our main character is a human who is, she's the ward of the king because her father was this like notorious general that fought in the Fey Wars. And she gives back to the lower classes by stealing drugs from trains that transport them through the city and putting them onto the black market so that the lower classes are benefiting from the profits instead of the elite. And one day she's caught at the checkpoint between the human part of the city and the Fey part. And she's thrown into this prison that pretty much nobody ever escapes from where she meets this like legendary, I guess, cause he, he fought on the Fey side in the Fey Wars and he's like this legendary figure called Warwick Farkas. I thought that some of these installments would be bigger actually because I know the last book is but now I don't know what to do because I wasn't expecting these right now and now that I finally have them I really really want to continue. by officers Josh Duma, I hope I'm saying that right, and Mike Nichols. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So they knock on that door, announce themselves, and finally the door opens. Good. I nearly said good morning, but absolutely not. It's 10.30 at night. I've just wrapped up some Patreon sprints and I'm about to go up to get ready for bed. But we do have a development. I was reading Eye of the World all throughout those sprints and it's a slow read, so I only read like 60 pages, but that does put me at the almost 300 page mark. I'm still really enjoying the writing style of this. Definitely wasn't an easy reading, reading experience tonight because I, I read better in the morning in the daytime in general. So by the time it gets to this time at night, like my focus isn't 100% there, which isn't what I want for this. But still really enjoying the writing style. I will say though, I don't know if I like Rand as main character. I think that he's very, I, I'm assuming he grows throughout the series because I'm assuming that he is the main character, but he's very like, naive but in a presumptuous way where like he thinks he has the right to all of these stances and opinions that he actually has no clue about which is frustrating and Moraine on the flip side of that I'm finding to be very patronizing which is irritating me slightly but um yeah that's just a couple of observations on the characters at this point I really enjoyed the last chapter as well which for those of you guys who want to go look it is chapter 19 shadows waiting and I'm excited to pick this back up again in the morning. But the development that we have had is that I'm going to be DNFing Promises and Pomegranates. I'm 41% into it, which is 160 pages. And I want to call it a soft DNF, but I know myself and I know I'm not going to come back to it. The only thing that was keeping me reading this is that Savar Miller is one of the authors attending Rare, which is why I kind of prioritized it. And it's a mafia romance about a guy who is like the hitman for a mafia family. And he does like a business agreement with the guy, like the, the leader of the mafia family to marry his daughter, even though she was supposed to marry somebody else so they actually do really like each other but the circum like it wasn't her choice to marry him so it's fine and i read the snus the uh, snutty 
I read the smutty prequel novella to this, which I think was called Sweet Sin. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. I think it was only maybe less than, it was definitely less than 100 pages. But I'm not disliking Promises and Pomegranates. It's just not compelling for a romance and what i really want in romance is for it to be compelling so it's just not really doing anything for me in that regard it's not even got to a part where it's romantic at all yet as well and i'm almost halfway through and there's nothing else really keeping me reading it there's a soft dnf because i haven't really dnf'd it for a reason um, other than I'm just not feeling it. But I do know that it's now been tainted by the DNF to a point where I'll never return to it. So if that does sound interesting to you, then maybe give it a try. I'm just really not in the mood for it. I want something that's really going to grip me. That being said, I don't know if the next book I'm going to pick up is going to grip me because I'm starting We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal, which I'm really excited about because, not because of the book actually, which is sad, but this is my December Patreon pick. This one was my November one, which to be fair, I've been reading this since December. So I am behind, but it's just taking me a while to get through the book i've just read feed was the january pick and this one is the december pick so now i'm up to date on those which is beautiful because i hate it when i fall behind but this is 484 pages um it's a young adult fantasy which is why i'm not sure i know it has a little bit of a romantic plot so i'm expecting like that angst within the romance and i have actually to be fair heard good things it's just you know that I'm not reading the most YA fantasy at the minute, but I do love it when I find those rare books and series that are actual gems. And I've heard good things about this one. So this one is about a girl who is dressing as a boy to hunt to feed her village. And it is about a boy who I think might be the Sultan's bastard son. And he's also like the royal assassin, but he doesn't want to assassinate people because of course he doesn't. Because do they ever? I wish they did, but alas he does not so i'm going to be going starting that in bed hoping that it's a little bit fast paced i don't like reading um like if i'm reading more than one book at once i don't like them to be the same genre which is why i like to have my ebook as a romance and my physical book as something like a bit more dense a bit more complex a bit more gritty but i'm hoping that with this because it's ya it'll be a little bit more faster paced if not i might have to pause it until i finish eye of the world because it's not a suitable bedtime book if it requires too much brain power and also i do think that because i'm assuming this is going to have a very different tone and also a very different setting that it will be enough for them to be distinctive and not too similar because i couldn't read like two epic high fantasies at the same time because i'd just get them confused so hopefully that will be fine i have had a little bit of an anxiety day today so my day was completely derailed because i was supposed to film today and i just really um i couldn't face it so i decided that i was going to tackle all of the things that were causing me to have anxiety which they weren't causing me to have anxiety but they were the things that i was my anxiety was latching on to so i was going to do that i was going to do a bunch of admin because admin always stresses me out because it's like a list of a lot of things but realistically they only take like 15 minutes each but because there's so many of them it overwhelmed me a little bit one of the things was my taxes so i started my taxes and i hate doing my accounts but when i start doing them i find it hard to stop because it's so satisfying to go through the list and like allocate all of the expenses it's just really therapeutic like the actual sorting of things so um it took me all day i did get a fringe trim because self-care and all I did was my taxes so now I've ended up in a position where I'm behind on what I was intending to do because um to soothe my to soothe my anxiety I did my taxes and my accounts this is where we are at guys it's not good <laughs> So small curveball, kind of, not really, actually, just did not realise this was going to happen today. I finished the audiobook I've been listening to since September. I'm not sure if I've mentioned anywhere or in any of my vlogs. Maybe I have in passing once, but I've been listening to the graphic audio versions of the Akatar audiobooks. So if you don't know what the graphic audios are, they're kind of like a, like a radio play or a podcast play that is an audiobook that's been adapted to be like a full cast audio with sound effects and music and all of that kind of stuff. So because Akatar is one of my favourite series ever and I wanted something to listen to while I was walking Brie that wouldn't take my attention too much away from walking her um because i started listening to it three months ago when she was worse behaved than she is now not that she's the best behaved now but yeah i wanted something that wasn't going to distract me from the walk but also something that i didn't need to pay attention to so much that i would be missing important things 
if my attention was pulled away. So I started listening to this. They come in like two parts. So I finished the first half of Akatar. They're not even long audiobooks as well. And it's literally taken me since September. They're like four and a half hours each. But because they have music, I can't really speed anything up that has music in it. Because that like takes away the point of it being like full cast with sound effects and music, you know. So yeah, I finished that. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Do I need to tell you guys what it's about? Come on, we know what Akatar is about here, right? right? It's a fairy romance. It's a young adult fairy romance about a girl called Fera. Wow, I never explained this. This is hard. It's about a girl called Fera who accidentally kills a fey wolf shifter that she thinks is a normal wolf. So the High Lord of one of the courts in the fairylands comes to her and takes her life in exchange for the one that she took. So she thinks that he's gonna kill her, but he actually like sweeps her away to his manor house in the spring court where she has to live out the rest of her days. The plot thickens exponentially though. So I am going to put this into my spreadsheet as something I've read, obviously, but the rating is irrelevant. I gave Akatar five stars in 2015. It's still a five star. I do really like the graphic audios as somebody who struggles to pay attention. Love me a full cast audio. So I actually found out recently that the graphic audio are making Red Rising audiobooks, which I love the original Red Rising audiobooks, but I think I'll probably do with Red Rising what I've been doing with Akatar, where I use it as my dog walking book. And I just think the reason why I it's taking me so long to finish this as well is because I only listen to it when I'm walking Brie by myself. And normally, like Curtis and I either take turns or we go together. So it's it's not super often that I go on my own, which is why it's taken me so long. But um, it's quarter past seven. I have Buffy in 45 minutes and I'm thinking I might try and squeeze in a 30 minute like steady state kind of workout. I can't do high intensity right now because the PMS is still kicking my ass if you um, watched last week's vlog. you'll I, I spoke about that a little bit at the end. So yeah, I think I'm gonna try a steady state cardio, like just a, an easy 30 minute one with Cody Rigsby and then um, I'm gonna get in the bath and watch Buffy with my patrons. I have had a very unpleasant morning. <laughs> Fucking hate anxiety, man. But um, I'm very shortly about to set off on my two hour drive to Manchester to see the 1975 for the second time at this tour. So I thought I would do a little outfit of the day. We have, this is from the I Like It When You Sleep tour. And then we just have check shirt. And then this, it's zero degrees in Manchester, guys. It's freezing. I'm scared because I don't want to wear a lot of clothes because I'll be really hot in the gig, but it's zero degrees in Manchester. <laughs>
it's 2 a.m. Oh my God, my voice. I woke up with a sore throat this morning um, and obviously the gig hasn't helped. So it's 2 a.m. But I finally made it home um, and you can see that I'm going to be sleeping in tomorrow. My eyes feel so dry right now. <laughs> You made me wanna run away and never come back I wish I never said I loved you, that's a damn fact You made me wanna run over myself again Go to hell with friends, oh You made me wanna go away, go away Cause all I ever did was show you love and that was every day, every day You made me wanna go away But I'm not sure you really know about it I've been through a lot and I'm not sure you really care about it Even though that hurts my heart I don't know how to feel about it Don't know how to feel about it Don't know I keep on falling I know that I get myself So I gotta say I envision this coming together a lot better than it has done Because we have Assassin's Apprentice over here that won't fit in this stack And then we have Fool's Assassin over here that won't fit down the side Um... But yeah, I wanted all of my Robin Hobb together in here so that I could dismantle the VU Schwab shelf. But now I just have VU Schwab trinkets from A Darker Shade of Magic on my Robin Hobb shelf. So this is a hot mess. It might be a work in progress, um, but it'll do for now. I get you to feel my immense. Everybody want to be the one to be loved. You nobody want to know what it takes to do it. Anytime I want to be the one to be loved, you never pull it through. You let me screw it. I guess I got used to that though. You used to let us to cut your fellow. I guess I got used to that one Trust the next one, not a hello You made me wanna go away, go away You made me wanna go away, go away Good afternoon. You can probably hear in my voice. I have a little bit of a sore throat going on. <laughs> Yesterday, I pretty much, I just edited in the morning and then I was just out of it for most of the day because I was really tired from getting home at 2 a.m. on Friday night. But I did pick up a couple of things in Manchester that I wanted to show you guys. There is a branch of my favorite comic book store, which is Traveling Man in Manchester. It's Newcastle, Leeds, Manchester and York. So all four cities that are closest to me. And I'm really funny about manga and comics. I will rather not continue a series I've started than buy it from anywhere other than a comic book store. So Traveling Man or Forbidden Planet. So every time I go in, I see if they have like the installments of manga that I need. I still don't have Dream in some volume five because all I can find in comic book stores is volume one, two, and 10. And I need obviously five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. But what I did manage to find in the Manchester Traveling Man was volumes 10, 11, and 12, of Children of the Whales, which you guys may remember, I read volume nine, which was the last one that I own physically in the last vlog that I posted, the Bookopoly vlog. So I thought while they were there and they had all of them, they were all also on three for two. I may as well pick them up. I do have a traveling man card as well. I can't remember what it's actually called, but you pay like three or five pounds for it. And then you get points with every purchase and the points add up really, really quickly. So um, yeah, they were three for two. And then I got points, obviously, for getting them from Traveling Man as well. So if you guys didn't watch last week's vlog, this is a older teen manga series about a group of people who are on a floating island called the Mud Whale. And they don't think anything really of their situation until they accidentally stumble upon another human. And they realize that there are other people that live out in the world and that the world is a lot wider than they originally thought that it was. I'm, I think this is about the halfway point. I'm pretty sure I read 
that it's going to be 22 volumes in total. I am <laughs> just about the halfway point now. I'm still not sure how I feel about long manga series. This one I enjoy enough to continue but it's not like the best thing or the best manga I've ever read but then it's also fantasy. And you guys know that I really really like my contemporary manga so that could also have something to do with it. Um, but I really really like the art style in this and I find it interesting that it has a more like I guess complex plot line than I have read in manga before. But once again, that is probably because I typically read contemporary as opposed to fantasy. But yeah, I picked those up. And I also have made a little bit of a dent in Eye of the World since I last spoke with you. I'm now just past the halfway point. <laughs> Been reading this forever. I'm 410 pages into it, so I'm like 30 pages past halfway, and I'm hoping to hopefully get through another 100 pages of it tonight. Still really, really enjoying this. I'm enjoying it a little bit more now that it's kind of gone multi-perspective because like I said, Rand was getting a little bit annoying to me. He's very much the bland hero that we're accustomed to. Like, you know, in series like this, I don't know why actually. I guess it's just because there's a lot more diversity in media now, but the hero tends to be this like strong all-American poster child, which is literally as boring as sliced bread. Whereas the side character are a little bit more interesting than Rand is. So yeah, I like that it's gone a little bit more multi-perspective. And We Hunt the Flame, I actually don't know what I'm doing about this because I read the first two chapters and I really, really enjoyed the writing style, but it's it's a, apparently a YA fantasy, but it doesn't read like one writing style wise. So I don't think that it's a good fit for the book that I read before bed because that book is supposed to be like a low brain power book like it's supposed to be a no thoughts head empty kind of book and we hunt the flame isn't fitting the bill so i think i may end up starting something else to be my no thoughts head empty bedtime book and then save we hunt the flame until after i finished eye of the world and bump it into like my main read but i love the writing style in that so far immediately when i was reading the first chapter i had very good feelings about we hunt the flame so yeah i think that's one that i'm gonna really enjoy um, it's just not one that I can read just before I go to bed because <laughs> nothing's going in or it's going in and it's going like literally straight back out the other side and within a page I'm falling asleep because it's just it requires too much brain power. I am desperately trying to hold back this cold. It's definitely not COVID. I've tested. It's also not really progressing because I've actually had a sore throat for about a week on and off and obviously going to shows isn't helping because I'm straining my voice but yeah it's not really progressing past being stuck in the throat and I don't have really many other symptoms of anything but I'm desperately trying to hold whatever this is at bay until Tuesday because it's the last show of 1975 season tomorrow and I'm not fucking missing it so yeah I'm going to I've done um a tidy round in here today. So I think I'm just gonna wipe down my desk and then I'm done. And I'm gonna go and make a warm drink, possibly lemon and honey, although I am running out of honey, and then read some of Eye of the World. I think I do wanna see a brief for a walk. What time is it? 20 to three. <laughs> Yeah, I think I want to take her at about half past three so that it's done. And I don't really have any other plans for the day apart from reading now. Okay, guys, here we are. Last day of 1975 season. Last outfit of the day because I do not foresee myself going anywhere for a long time after all of these trips to various cities around the country. I'm feeling very brave right now. One, because I feel quite exposed. And two, because it's January. If you were wondering how I'm on the verge of a cold, this is why I keep going outside dressed like this. Um, but today we have a mesh top, Calvin Klein bra represent. I mean, if if people are going to be able to see a bra, you got to have a decent one on, you know. And then we have the fishnets and ripped jeans. I also, um, I'm going to go and try and get this stain out. I just made a bagel with avocado and I hit myself with the avocado after I cut it in half. Um, so I need... <laughs> fixes i only just realized it was so bad um so yeah i'm gonna go get that avocado stain out and then i'm gonna hit the road because i think our plan is to get to leaves for around three o'clock and then get food and then queue for a couple of hours earlier than we would normally do so yeah i'm gonna freeze my tits off but i only need to make it another 12 hours and then i can let this cold take me i'm done
feel like I've been holding my body together with sheer willpower since Friday. Just desperate to get to 1am in the morning, like this morning, the morning just gone. And I finally made it and this morning I feel like everything is just erupting. Like my skin is bad, my cold is coming through full force. I was fine last night at the gig and then when I started driving home and also this morning, I'm just, I'm unwell. <laughs> I've been editing for all of today but I have that, do you know that fatiguey cold feeling where you feel kind of out of it, you're not exactly sure what's going on. That is how I feel right now. So. It is about time to wrap up this vlog. So I'll give you an update on where I'm up to in my current reads. I've been through quite a lot of books this week, but not really finished very many. In fact, I've only finished the Akatar audiobook, which was just came out of nowhere. But I have made a great deal of progress in Eye of the World. Now, I mean, I feel like I have realistically, it's only 300 pages, which for a week, I mean, it's not the most, but I feel very accomplished. I only have 200 pages left of this. Still very, very much enjoying it um, and excited to pick it back up. I'm really, really into this now and I'm really excited for what the rest of this book and also what the rest of the series holds. So that is good because I was terrified that I would hate that book. So then I'm just going to mention very briefly because we'll talk about it more in next week's vlog. But when I put down we Hunt the Flame, when I put that on pause. I did pick up Priest by Ciara Simone, which I'm reading because it is the Cliterature Book Club pick for January, created by Steph from Steph Loves, and I am a co-host of it. And I've made it to 70 pages into this. So this is a taboo romance about a priest and a young woman that moves into his parish. Are they still called parishes in the US? Let me know, I guess. He's a Catholic priest. This does have content warnings for systemic sexual abuse and um, suicide as well. So do be wary of that if you pick this up but so far so good in terms of this one. So I'm really excited for next week's vlog because I feel like I'm going to be finishing a bunch of stuff and also that one's going to run us up to the end of the month. Just before I sign off I did want to remind you guys of a little something that is going on which I don't want to mention too frequently because I know like shit like this gets annoying especially if it's not something that you are able to like kind of take me up on but if you are enjoying watching my vlogs where like I'm traveling all over the place there is going to be a lot more of that in 2023 I decided that 2023 is the year where I start living again after um being really really anxious for a lot of last year and then obviously the pandemic before that so I have so many trips booked for this year and I'm also taking chances and opportunities I previously would have been way too scared to do like this year for the first time I'm going to be going overseas by myself like I'm gonna fly by myself for the first time on a long haul flight as well which is nerve wracking and I'm also doing something really cool which I have mentioned briefly and if you follow me on Instagram you will have seen there um, I'm actually hosting a trip to Rome that you guys can join me on so the trip is to Rome and Florence it is a week long it is a little bit pricey and I'm very aware that it is quite expensive because Italy is an expensive country to be in and Rome is an expensive city to be in it has a whole host of activities such as um, a tour of the Vatican and the Sistine Chapel. It has a Colosseum, Trevi Fountain and Spanish Steps visit. There is a pasta cooking class. There is a Tuscan farm tour. There's a walking tour of Florence and um, a couple of other things as well. I think one of the things is wine tasting. The trip is seven days in total. It is from the 24th to the 30th of September this year and your accommodation and a bunch of meals are included. It's six breakfast three dinners and two lunches I think. The only thing that isn't included within the price is travel insurance and flights from your destination to Rome because obviously everyone's flying from different places so it's not something that's easy to organize because obviously like a flight for me is a very different amount than like a flight from um like Los Angeles would be. So yeah I don't really want to be mentioning this too much um I haven't actually really mentioned it on my channel though to be honest but I know obviously it's just something that not everybody is going to be able to do but if that's something that you are interested in I'm going on this trip. I'm really really excited. I'm nervous but I'm excited. Nine people have booked on already and it's just an opportunity especially if you're like a solo traveler, somebody who wants to travel but doesn't have anybody to go with. It's an opportunity to join a like-minded group of people like people who all love books and who all want to embark on those adventures together and I've actually been to 
Rome before and the food is amazing. So if you're a foodie, Rome is definitely like a, a place that needs to be on your bucket list. So that is always linked in my description box if you guys would like to check it out. Like I said, I know that it's pricey. Trust me, I made it as cheap as it could possibly be, like as cheap as it was in my power to make this trip. But you do to secure your spot, you have to put down a 25% deposit and then you have until I think like late June, early July to pay your remaining balance. So yeah, that will always be linked down in my description box. If you are at all interested, um, please feel free to go ahead and check it out. If it's something that you might be interested in, all of the details are on the page that is linked in my description box for you guys to check out. And obviously like if you can't come, completely understand but if that is something that you would be able to do if it's something that you want to do then i would love to have you on board because i am so hyped so that brings us to the end of this week's vlog guys thank you so much for watching i do hope you've enjoyed it if you've made it this far a little bit of a short one compared to i mean it's not short but it is compared to the feature lengths i've been putting out recently like i said next week's vlog is just going to be another straight up weekly vlog hopefully going to be finishing a bunch more things but yeah i do hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Oh we bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go when nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no